But at night, the seer of Provence sat alone upstairs in his secret study and began to cultivate his famous visions of the future. The wand in the hand is placed in the middle of the legs of the tripod. He sprinkles both the hem of his robes at his foot with water. A voice, fear, he trembles in his robes. Divine splendor. The gods sit down beside him. Nostradamus, 1555. Most of the work that Nostradamus did in his divination, he did at night. And he lit candles throughout the upper floor of the room, which was his laboratory, you might say. And he filled the, the brass bowl with water. He then passed the wand over the bowl, and by moving a vibration across the surface of the water, this helped to open the veils of time. By looking at the reflection, he would go into trance. And by doing so, he would travel out of his body and into the future, into time. This is how he would see the visions that he saw. He would see them occurring one after the other in all their horror, not knowing what they represented, not knowing what time period he was looking at. But when he came back into his body, maybe as long as two hours later, he would find that he had written a four-line poem, the Quatrain. Nostradamus wrote 1,000 quatrains, dividing them into 10 groups of 100 each, which he called centuries. He wrote in his native French, but to protect himself from the superstitious witch hunters of the day, he obscured the verse with Latin and Greek and even anagrams. The first edition of his Centuries was published in 1566 and continues to be published to this day. In Nostradamus's time, it was believed that only witches and heretics could see through time. To claim clairvoyance was heresy against the church. On the night of the king's death, a crowd gathered in front of the Inquisition demanding that Nostradamus be burned. That night, Count Montgomery was heard to exclaim, Cursed be the Divine One! who predicted it so evilly and so well. As a favorite of Catherine de' Medici, Nostradamus was spared. The second of Nostradamus's antichrists was Adolf Hitler, though Nostradamus referred to him in his quatrains as Hister. A captain of greater Germany will, by his speeches, seduce great numbers. The most part of the battlefield will be against Hister. They shall subjugate the borders of the Danube. They shall pursue the crooked cross of iron. Playing next to, dreaming his dreams of conquest. Nostradamus's third antichrist has yet to appear. Still, his record remains impressive. Many think the verses of Nostradamus foretold the French Revolution of 1789, 234 years before it happened. His quatrains describe in lurid detail the executions by guillotine of Marie Antoinette and King Louis XVI. Paris was never in such great disorder. The Republic of the Great City, with great harshness, shall not permit exit to the King. Elected French King causes tempest, fire, blood, slice. His opus, The Centuries, describes not only events in the future, but the methods he employed for divination. I extend my hand holding the rod of branches. The answer comes to me as my arm trembles. It was through methods like this that Nostradamus may have foreseen the British adventures in the New World, only just discovered in the years before his birth. 
In several quatrains, he is said to have written about the British colonists striking out on their own in a war for independence. The West shall be free from the British Isles. Twenty years of the reign of the moon have passed. When the sun takes up its exhausted days, then my prophecies will end and be accomplished. Nostradamus, 